Um, thank you, Dugel. Um, first, a quick survey. Who knows what introspection is about? Could you just raise your hand? Okay. Who has already used it in his own code? Okay. For the people who have not raised their hands, don't worry, you are not alone. It was my case a few months ago. And uh, that's why uh, we had this idea of uh, talking about uh, introspection. Um, how did it start for me? Um, we were um, working with uh, different people on writing a test for hiring uh, Pythonista. We had already tests for other languages, but we had known for uh, Python, and, I, and we saw that it was important to have such a, such a test. Among the tests, we wanted to verify that the candidates could write specific type of, uh, of uh, functions, typically like a generator. We wanted also to enforce, typically, the use of list comprehension by asking to um, modify a code by changing just a line. Um, the problem is that this test is, of course, automated and that we wanted to check if the candidate had indeed followed those constraints. And all the things we had are the three lines that you see there. So roughly, we could import a module called Dancer, including the function that the candidate had um, developed. Then, of course, how could we do that? No ID. So who should you ask? Of course, your best friend. And who is the best friend of any software engineer? Stack Overflow. And of course, uh, uh, we found the, the answer there. And the answer is, oh, just use the library called inspect. Just call get source and is generator. And then you have uh, the possibility to answer uh, that original question. What is exactly introspection? So let's go back to Wiktionary and ask, OK, introspection, uh, two possible meaning, one in psychology and the other one in object-oriented programming. OK, let's select the first one. Um, and the first one is just ability of a program to examine a start, um, at runtime the type or property of an object. The ability of a program to examine at runtime the type or the properties of an object. Hey, that's cool. That's cool because in Python, everything is an object. A function is an object, a class is an object, everything is an object. Isn't that cool? So you can, in fact, go and look everywhere in, your, in the different element of your code. In fact, I was already using introspection without, in fact, knowing it. Um, you probably recognize uh, that uh, snippet of code. Um, it's the code which is used in order um, to separate the code which should be executed when you are running your module directly or when you are importing it. And um, the difference is made just by looking at that specific attribute called name, which is the name of the current module or similarly the current namespace. So by using that, I was in fact using introspection. But, net, but no, let's look at what the standard library can offer. And let's start by the built-in. So this is a list of uh, functions, um, which is part of the standard library, uh, which can be considered as being introspection. Uh, you have things like ID to get back the exact identity of the object you are looking at. Uh, Dear, which is providing the list of attributes and methods. Type, which is providing the type. Um, as attribute, get attribute, relatively explicit. Is subclass, is subclass, is instance callable, providing you information about a specific characteristic of your object, as well as different functions for accessing variables depending on the scope. Um, the standard library provides also um, a lot of attributes. Uh, there is a really huge list. There was a lot of effort done by the core developers in order to provide a, a uniform uh, interface for the object. And if you look at the documentation of the inspect library, you have the full list of all the, the, the um, attributes you can call. Typically, if you want to get the documentation of a module, a class, or a method, it's the same way. What does that mean in our case? So you have a function, stupid function, nothing important there. Uh, what can you get from it? You can ask, for, of course, for the type, and you get the, the type as a function. Uh, you can ask for the name. Uh, so you could ask what the interest of asking the name of something I am providing. Uh, well, this can happen when uh, you try to um, associate a different name to the function. 
So it's important to be able to get back to the original name. You can, of course, get the documentation. You can get the module it is part from. It, it is part from. You can ask all the uh, methods and attributes that that specific function has. So this is a list. But the standard library provides even more than that. It provides a dedicated library called Inspect, uh, whose objective is to inspect live objects. It's a pretty big library. It's around uh, 60 different functions, but providing four main services. First one, type checking. Is it a module, is it a class, is it a method, etc. Getting the source code, um, get the module, get the source file, etc. No problem to ask that. Inspecting classes and functions. What is the signature of a given function? What are the different parameters inside the signature? And uh, examining the interpreter stack. We are not going to discuss about the last one. It's, um, I refer you to the presentation of um, Alessandro Molina from uh, Monday on uh, Python bytecode and introspection for that specific point. If you want to know more, there is, of course, as usual, a pretty good um, documentation of that, uh, that model. Let's go back to our example. What does that mean we can do with that, uh, with that uh, library? We can get the exact parameter, inspect.signature, you provide the function and you look at the attribute parameters and then you have uh, an order dict which uh, contains the different parameters part of the signature. And of course you can ask for the complete uh, source code of the function. Okay, that's very nice. We've seen a lot of um, uh, functions that we could use, but in practice, where, what could be the use of such a stuff? And so it's time for a demo. Thanks. Now we know a little bit more about introspection. More importantly, we know how to do basic things. We know which function to use, for example. But uh, what about doing a bit more? Uh, do we, doing real things and having a bit more fun. Um, for example, we could check that our doc strings in our code are always up to date. It can be very interesting because, um, I mean, you communicate to the outside, outside world with your documentation and the guy who will use your uh, library will see your doc and will know uh, what parameters to uh, call your function with. So. It's important to have a, a documentation that um, tell the exact number of parameters to give and, and what type of parameter to, to provide um, as well when we will be able to get valuable information from our doc string. Maybe we could um, check that the, um, the value provided at call time are indeed of the right type according to what's documented. Let's begin. Um, <coughs> First, we have to agree together about one um, syntax for doc string because there are actually different uh, syntax that we find in, in open source libraries. Um, let's take this one. Um, I take, um, I write colon, param, then an optional type name, then the name of the parameter, then colon, and followed by an optional description. What is uh, relevant for our use case here is to be able to retrieve the whole list of the parameters, names, and also if they have um, types documented or not. Um, okay. Here is how you just get the documentation string. Nothing new here. You just uh, invoke the attribute doc. If you have a documentation string, here it's how it looks like. You just have a string, the row, original string, and if you have no documentation on your function, you will have none. And I try to do that. Here, the attributes are written <coughs> none. Okay, um, we have to extract um, the parameters. Here is a, is a piece of code that is not very funny, we just have to parse the doc. I have nothing very interesting to learn, uh, to teach to you, uh, just create your regex for your syntax if you don't have already a library to do this. Here we extract, um, I don't know if you see if I select, but here you, I, I, I'm looking for the keyword param in the, in the documentation string. Here I'm getting the uh, name of the parameter and here the optional type. 
then I will just return all of the, all of the couples um, containing the name and the type of each uh, parameters. But just let's run it to see how it, how it goes. Um, I have, uh, I, I can see here my four parameters as expected, A, B, C, D. I can see uh, that C is assigned to the type, uh, to no type of parameters. Here I get a none, which means there was no, no documented type. Uh, and for the other one, I get just what was written as type name in the doc, and that's all. Nothing very smart here. Yeah, okay. Uh, now we have to do a little bit more. Uh, if we do uh, validation afterwards, we need to load the type. We don't, uh, we don't just want to have uh, the name of the type. Why? Um, if you just wanted to, to use the built-in type, which gives you the type of an attribute, you could check that the representation of the type, which is its name, uh, fits the type name in the documentation. But uh, if you want to have uh, a number as input, and you write this in your documentation, and you provide a, an integer, an integer is a number, but the type name of an, inter it, of an integer is int. It's not number, so I have to load the actual type that was written in the documentation, and then check if uh, if, if uh, the input uh, provided fits. And so we will use is instant for that. But you know that. Um, I also need an, another thing. Uh, it's to uh, import. Uh, um, I mean, being able to import a module, because um, in my documentation, in my doc string, you saw that I was referring to a custom type called example type that I was just defining uh, just above uh, in the current module. So I have to be able here to uh, import the current module and use the function get at just as above to load example type from the current module instead of from built-in, for example, as it was above. So here I can see that it has uh, effectively loaded the type example type. Again. And here, a basic function I, ha I will have to use at some point uh, it's, is instance to check that a value, for example, 3 is actually an int, as I told us before. Um, let's put all these little pieces together in a function that will take uh, the name of a type and optionally, uh, no, not optionally, but a uh, name of a module, and I will optionally use the module uh, to, to, to load the type from this module. But if there is a dot in the, in the name of the type, I don't have to because you know that if we have a dot in the name of the type, then it's a fully qualified name, and I just don't, in, don't need, need anything else to, to know from what module it has been, I mean, in what module it has been defined. So, just we see that uh, I just use the built-in function I used before, get at is instance, and the import module function from import lib. And now I can see how it behaves. Um, I'm able to load a type from the module main, which is the current module. And here I try to load an ex um, a type I, I didn't actually define in the module name, uh, in the module main, and I can see that I have a proper uh, error saying that this is at least not a, a valid type. If we just look at this module. Okay. Now uh, let's put again what we just did together in a function that will very simply um, just extract what we are able to what we are able to extract from the documentation, um, get the name, and this time load the types uh, from the type names we get from the doc string. And here, it's how it can be used. Um, it's very similar to what we saw before, but this time for each parameter name we have an actual type here. Um, the type function, and here still none for C, which has no type constraints. 
And you can see, by the way, that uh, the um, built-in types and the custom types have been uh, imported without any problem. Okay, so um, the goal for a reminder was to, um, to be able to verify that the doc string is up to date uh, according to the signature, the actual signature of the function, what parameters it takes. Um, so now the second point is to be able to get the signature. Um, the good news is in Python 3, we have a function that, do that uh, does that very, very easily. Um, it's called signature, and it returns an object of type signature. Um, if you get a representation of the signature, of the object signature, you see between the parentheses the parameters that your, uh, that your function takes. And what is, what is uh, useful, among others, is a parameter called parameters inside this uh, signature object, um, which uh, is an iterable. Actually, I think it's a readme uh, map, I mean, a dict, readme dict. Um, and you can, for example, uh, get a number of parameters very intuitively. You could also get the default value of a specific parameter by its name, so it's very easy as well. You just give the name and use uh, on, the, on the parameter object uh, the attribute default. And here I'm expecting to see 42 because it was the default value I gave to the parameter D in my signature. And now is a big piece of code, but it's really not to be afraid of. Uh, just read the doc and it's, it will be enough. Um, basically, we just want to check that if we provide a default value in the signature, it has the right type if the type is provided in the doc string. So we, just, we, just, we are just checking that the doc string is consistent when it comes to the types and the default values in the signature. It's quite straightforward, actually. We just use what we did before, getting the param names and types, getting the signature, and comparing them. Here I run what I just did on my function of my testing function, and I, uh, I'm expecting to not raise. I mean, this function is supposed to raise an error if the documentation is inconsistent. So here I can see it's consistent, which is a good news. Um, for the example, of course, I provide another function that is um, badly documented. Uh, you can see that it takes only three parameters, and I just copy paste in the the doc string of the other function, which had four parameters. So obviously, the last line here, which tells that it takes a, a parameter d, is not relevant. And here. When I run the function check documented params on that function, it tells me that um, it's wrong because uh, signature takes just ABC. The function just takes ABC and uh, documentations tells about ABC and D presumably. Okay, so the good news is we just achieved our first, first goal. I don't think it was too, too hard. Um, so um, now I can verify that where, wherever in my code I, I want to check that, I can check that the string is up to, uh, up to date. Uh, side note, uh, the string is a doc that is assigned to a function, but also uh, to a class or method or other things, actually. So you can do that everywhere if you want. Um, so second goal, yeah, I'm sorry. I show that um, the second point is yet to be done. And now uh, it's a bit more at runtime. It's a little more an actual introspection because I really need, need now to know the actual state uh, of my input at runtime uh, to be able to check it against the expected types according to, this, to the documentation. So uh, we see here I'm invoking the, the function called signature provided by the module inspect. So nothing new here. But now I'm calling another method uh, on that object, which is, which is called bind. Very simply, bind, you just give it all the arguments you would call your function with 
when you want to just call it. And Bain will tell you uh, that this value would be bound to this parameter and so on. Just, just look, it will be there. Um, here it tells that other func as I, that I provided as first parameter will be bound to the parameter A because A is the first parameter. And then I explicitly, explicitly uh, invoked bind with the parameter C, which was actually the third parameter, and you can see that there is no mistake. Uh, it uh, correctly bound uh, the value 2 to the parameter C and uh, the instance of example type to the parameter B. So it's just, it's no magic, but it's very easy to have that and not have to implement it yourself. Um, now that we have that, that uh, again and again, we just uh, create a function that invokes what we did before. I'm able to get the names and types from my documentation string. I'm able to get the signature. And uh, now I, I'm able at, at, at runtime to bind the values that are given to the function to uh, the parameters and the parameters to the documented types. So with this, Mm, again, it's not a very big deal. Just um, it's a decorator. If you don't know what a decorator is, very simply here, my use case of a decorator is I want to add a, a check step, a check step um, before doing the rest of my uh, function behavior. Uh, I don't, I don't want to, to touch what will do my function, but I want to decorate it in order for it to just do a call, to do a check on the input before doing the rest. So the usage is that uh, on the first line, I just add the decorator to any function that is be defined just below. Um, my function can do whatever, I don't care. Here it does nothing, and I just added the decorator for, to tell at least my, um, my uh, input should be validated first. And that is what I will do here. I'm calling the, um, the function that I was decorating just before. The function still has the same name. And when I call it, despite the fact that this function was not doing anything, I have an error because the decorator added a step to that, which was a validation step on the input. And I, I also have a val uh, valuable information to, to work with because I know that I, my mistake when, when calling this function was to provide uh, an integer as parameter B, which was expecting actually uh, an instance of example type. And that's it, we achieved our two goals. And so, yeah, well done. Okay. Uh, then we promise to try to answer the question, when should we use introspection? Um, it's a tough question. Um, the general principle is, should be relatively clear. You should be only using it when you don't know the information at compile time. Well, that's the principle. Um, no, in practice, uh, we don't pretend that we have the truth, but uh, we have tried to identify some um, good candidates for places where introspection could be used. Um, the first one is about exploration, learning, and debugging. Uh, it's the idea that um, introspection allows you to have an in-depth view of what is happening with your object. And that's very, very nice if you want to learn typically the Python internals or to better understand uh, what is happening inside your code. The second one is related to I.O. Uh, that's uh, typically the case when you receive from outside uh, um, an unknown object and that uh, you want to adapt the behavior of your code depending on uh, the specificity of the object. On the uh, output side, it's more about uh, when typically you want to serialize um, any objects in order to, to log it or store it for future use. Then in that case, you have to adapt your behavior also depending on the specific um, type of the object. The next one is when you are missing so much the uh, polymorphism, polymorphism wow polymorphism of other languages or typed languages. Uh, so you would like to have a single function uh, which is processing whatever uh, type of object that you receive. And in that case, of course, you will have to adapt 
what is happening inside your code to the specific type and specificities of your object. The next one is um, if you are missing also interface. And um, typically in an architecture of plugins, then um, you are supposed to use uh, classes or, or uh, modules that you don't know and where you would be interested in checking that, uh, well, indeed, I have all the methods I need or I am expecting. And the last one is close to the first part of the exercise of, um, of UG is about metaprogramming. It's all the things around your code, like I would like to check some uh, convention, I would like to check some, um, um, some coherence within my, my code. Um, I want to be able to do auto-completion when uh, I am at uh, command line. Uh, I would like that the type of, of things where you, could, you can also use um, introspection. Uh, just um, three words of warning. The first one is about performance. Uh, of course, when you just ac uh, access um, an attribute of a class, it, uh, it has almost no cost, so it's fine. But uh, you could have some cases where um, introspection is more expensive. And um, also, as it's a good practice in uh, um, in programming, don't check multiple times the same things through your code. So check it once uh, when you receive the object from outside. As far as portability, uh, depending on the Python implementation, some objects um, could be not inspectable. So that's something to take into account if you want your code to be uh, working on the different Python implementations. And finally, maintainability. Uh, depending on the ID you are using, it could be uh, you could receive more or less help when uh, trying to do refactoring because, of course, everything is just, uh, just a representation like a string of, of classes when you are uh, calling them. That's all for us. We would like to thank you for, thank you for uh, attending this session. And, uh, yeah, by the way, Critio is hiring if uh, you are interested in working on really big data. Thank you. Okay, we have about um, four minutes for questions, if there are some questions. So I have one question. Um, so when you're doing introspection for some of the examples you have, it means you're executing the code when compared with using the AST module or some other way of evaluating like static analysis. I was just wondering if you combine the two approaches or I, I don't know, for, for example, Validating the doc streams, you could do it either way. Yes, true. Uh, actually, we we created a slide for uh, showing how ASD works and how is it's easy to create a visitor. And first, it uh, didn't fit in 30 minutes, and uh, it was also very. It's uh, it's another subject. Uh, really, really. If you do AST, you're not introspecting because you are analyzing the very structures, the stat static structure of your program. And in fact, when you visit the AST in Python, you have to load a source file. You, you are not inspecting the actual code that is running. You, you really are loading something else, even if it's the current file you are evaluating. Um, but you are loading something and creating the AST and visiting it. And you don't have the memory state of the current execution. You don't have the state of the data that is uh, going through your functions. So it's not introspection, actually. But when it comes to doctoring, uh, yes, the first example was to check something that truly is static. And it was just to show here that a way to, to, to check it um, was to use introspection in, the, in this very case because it's very easy with Python to just load your module. And because you just loaded it, you have something, you are runtime, you just have a state and you, you can see the state of a function. So it, it's just a way to do this. But the, the second example, the one we, where you check the inputs is the true, um, I mean, the pure theoretical uh, example of uh, introspection, of course. Okay, thank you very much.